today's video I wanted to talk about port trunking or you may know it as link aggregation. Uh, lots of names for it but the basic premise is to join multiple LAN ports together um, to get better performance. Um, so the, the joining of the, the LAN ports together can be done in a lot of different ways. Um, if you wanted to see every option available you can click into your network and virtual switch on your QNAP and go to the three dots at the top and then we have a little help article and when you scroll down in here about a third of the way uh, you'll see this little table and in here it talks about all the different options that we've got uh, available to do this uh, we've got seven options in total now to make it easier for you to pick which one uh, we do have a setup wizard that shows you uh, the different options um, so when you're in your interfaces section of the network and virtual switch what you'll see here is a port trunking button so if you click on this, you can see I've already got one created, but I'll show you how to create one with the add option here. So if I click add and I select adapters one and two, the only rule is that they generally have to be done in even numbers. So two, four, six or eight. Um, and you uh, have to have the, uh, the speed of the ports that are being joined to be the same. So if you want to have all one gig networking, no problem, all 10 gig networking, no problem. Uh, you can't mix the one gig and the 10 gigs um, into the same trunking group. Um, so here I'm going to select um, the two adapters, so adapter one and adapter two. In this case, uh, these are one gig ethernet adapters, as you can see in the sort of grayed out background there. Um, I've got no network cables connected to them right now, so that's where the speed is showing as a blank. If you had a network cable connected, um, it would show the speed that it's connected at there, and the green light would be on here in the status section. Um, when you click next, we start asking the first set of questions. So how are you connecting um, uh, the, the LAN ports that, that, that you've selected from the previous page to something? So we've got options here at the top. So if you do a direct connection between two NAS, so no switch, um, specifically for our VJBOD function. So that's virtual JBOD um, using one NAS as extra storage for another NAS. Um, so you can do that directly. And we will recommend that you use balance RR, where RR stands for round robin. As you go, scroll down a bit further, you've got the general switch option. So this would be um, anybody without a managed switch. So a lot of the lower cost switches out there don't have a a web interface or an application to manage them. They just are what they are. And here we've got uh, three separate options that you can choose from here. And then at the bottom, you've got the one that's the managed switch. Now this is the one I generally recommend. Um, specifically, I recommend the 802.3 AD option, um, or sometimes known as LACP, which is the uh, Link Aggregation Control Protocol. Um, so you've got a lot of different options. Now the only downside of the bottom option is you must have a managed switch. Um, so most of the, uh, the switches that we're selling now are managed switches, so if, I'll, I'll show you the interface of that in a moment. And you've got to do the setting at both sides. So you've got to say that you're doing the um, 802.3AD or whichever mode you pick. Um, you've got to choose that option on the QNAP as well as on the matching ports on the switch. Um, so here if I was to choose manage switch and click next, it then gives you some options and some explanation as to why you'd pick one of the other. Um, so the first one is failover. So this does not improve the performance. It's just a, a balance between the two ports. If one of the connections goes down, the other one will become active. Um, so it's going to uh, make sure that you get the, uh, the data to both uh, LAN ports or however many LAN ports that you've done in here. And then at the bottom, you've got the load balancing and failover. So this is the one that will increase the performance. Um, so this is going to bond the two ports together for load balancing purposes. So the first person or first uh, device on the network that tries to communicate, it will go through um, the first port in the aggregation group. The second uh, item that comes in will go through the second port and so on. Um, if you're doing multiple transfers from one computer, that would also apply here. It doesn't have to be separate devices. It can just be separate uh, uh, instances of communication and then you can choose which option that you want from here. So as I said before you've got to do this in two places at the same time so I do already have an aggregation group here set up on adapters 3 and 4 which in the case of this NAS here that's the 10 gig uh, ports these are 10 gig SFP plus connections and I've got a couple of DAC cables connected from here to one of our 10 gig switches. Now if I go into the information of this link, uh, you'll see that instead of being 10 gig in speed, if I go to the hardware tab, it's showing up as 20 gigs. So I've got two 10 gigs bonded together. 
Um, now, a lot of people might think that means you're going to get 20 gig throughput. So if you just do a drag and drop of one file, it's going to go 20 gig. That's not the case. It's still only going to reach a maximum speed of 10 gig. But if you do two transfers at the same time, each of those will be 10 gig so that you get a, an aggregated uh, speed of 20. Um, so it's going to help you with that scenario. So here with the 20 gig connection, uh, if I go across to the switch where it's connected to, we can see that in the link aggregation section of this uh, QNAP switch, we can see that ports one and two, which on this switch are SFP plus ports, is I've got ports one and two connected, which match ports three and four um, from the QNAP NAS that I'm using. And here I've got mode LACP, which is the 802.3 AD mode. And you can create link aggregation groups on a switch pretty easy. So here's um, LAG2. So let's say I wanted to create one for uh, ports three and four here. So what I can do is I can tick the box. I can choose ports three and four. And you can choose between two different types of um, link aggregation. So you can do LACP or static. Um, the needs of which are depending on the circumstance and, and how you're connecting it and what you're connecting it to. Um, so you really need to make sure that you, you know which one to select here. I can't say that for you because each situation is different. If you've got any questions, do ask in the comments below and I'll, I'll try to help out. Um, so here, if you wanted to create a link aggregation groups on ports three and four, you just click save. It's really that simple. It's that easy to set up. So now whatever I connect to ports three and four, so let's say I wanted to connect on this QNAP um, adapters one and two to those ports, um, I would just create a link aggregation group between these two. I would match it over here on the switch, connect the cables together, and now they're going to be uh, aggregated together into the switch. Everything would be correctly configured. Um, so that would apply to the 802.3 AD if you want to use a, a switch or some of the other modes that we've got as well. Um, so that's link aggregation. Again, it doesn't give you a combined uh, 20 gig a second total for a single transfer. Um, you've got to... Uh, 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 have uh, the two separate transfers going to it at the same time, either two transfers from one computer or, or separate transfers from separate computers. Um, it really comes into its own. So in this case, with this connected to my network with two 10 gig connections, that means I could have um, about 20 computers on one gig networking um, being load balanced across both links. Then everybody would get a dedicated one gig bandwidth to themselves because 20 of the one gig connections would equal uh, the bandwidth I'm feeding the switch here. Um, so it's really got a, a really good option for uh, people that have a lot of users on the network or somebody that just wants much faster throughputs. Um, in this case, this NAS that I'm using here, which is a TS-983XU-RP, um, this one is used as my uh, VMware storage server. So it's used for all the data stores I've got in a, a VMware test environment I've got. Um, and I've linked into the switch here with the two 10 gig connections, and I've got lots of uh, hosts. I've got three separate hosts. Uh, running VM where connected to that switch also with 10 gig um, so that it can load balance the connection to whoever needs it the most is going to get the bandwidth from this this scenario. Um, so hopefully that explained it. So as I say, it can be a bit confusing because even within the, uh, the QNAP interface, we do call it different things in different places. Our switches uh, would call it link aggregation. In the NAS, we call it port trunking, but it all really means the same thing. Um, so you've got port trunking just to bond the ports together. So most QNAP NAS these days come with um, two LAN ports at least. Um, some of the lower cost ones might still only have one, um, but anything that's um, got an Intel CPU, AMD CPU or better uh, would generally have uh, many more than, than two LAN ports. So you might have two um, normal speeds, so one gig, maybe two and a half gig, and then you might have some 10 gigs thrown in as well. Um, some of the enterprise models we've got uh, may have uh, four one gig LAN ports and four 10 gig ports. So there's a, a lot of different options you can do there. Um, and it goes all the way up to uh, the, the faster speeds as well. So whether it's 25 gig, 40 gig, or even 100 gig Ethernet, uh, you can port trunk all of them. And if anybody does have any questions or suggestions for any other videos, please do let us know in the comments section below, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks. Bye.